Hey guys, this is John at Perfect Vocals Academy. There is a ton of debate about do I use a multi-band compressor or do I use a dynamic EQ? Are they the same thing? Uh, they're not the same thing. They're very similar. I wanted to break down the differences to really clear the air for everyone. So before we get into this video, hit the subscribe button and like this video for me. Hey guys, welcome to Perfect Vocals Academy. This week, this has been a debate. <laughs> I, I swear, I get all of my content ideas from arguments online with people. <laughs> I don't argue, they do, just for the record. Um, Multiband compression versus dynamic EQ, or multiband compressor versus a dynamic EQ. Uh, I had somebody in a Facebook group tell me that dynamic EQ is no different than a multiband compressor. You don't need a multiband compressor whatsoever. They're similar. Yeah, they, they're definitely similar, but they are not the same. So I wanted to make this video clarifying this just, just to clear the air for some people and, uh, and uh, just so you know kind of when to pull out what and, and what the true difference is. Because obviously they wouldn't be the same or else they wouldn't make each plugin, you know, each type of plugin. Some of the differences I've found is, uh, you know, obviously a dynamic EQ. So I'll bring up the F6. You're going to have things like an actual EQ has. So this is like an actual EQ. Okay. So it has Q setting. You can, you can widen the Q. Let me do it on this one so you can see it. See, you can widen the cue, you can narrow the cue. It's very uh, surgical. So dynamic EQs are surgical. You can find a, a, an EQ res resonance or problem, get in there with a really narrow cue, and just affect that small little frequency. This makes it more transparent. Yes, dynamic EQ is definitely more transparent than multi-band compression. But that can kind of be a bad thing too, because sometimes it's not doing enough. But I definitely use both. You can see, you know, I, I use both. I use this for just small problems. And I use multi-band compression for the overall picture. Uh, more of a sonic character. So a multi-band compressor is functioning more like a compressor. There's no Q setting. There's no specific frequencies. You are given, in this case, four bands. There is the C6 with six bands, but I use the C4. I normally only need four. But you can separate it into bands, not frequencies, frequency bands, areas. Perfect Vocals Academy presents the Vocal Mixing Masterclass. Do you want to become a profitable audio engineer? This course includes a PVA sound treatment ebook, 15 in depth videos, as well as worksheets for each video. Bonus video How to Profit as an Up and Coming Audio Engineer, and a bonus Pro Tools template using Waves plugins is also included. This is basically if you look at a multiband compressor, you can view it as a compressor. When you look at a dynamic EQ, you can view it as an EQ. They are different, two different things. So a multiband compressor is literally just a compressor with four bands that you can dial in, attack, release, threshold, range, gain. And so it's like having four compressors inside of one compressor, but you get to select the frequency ranges that you want to use. So let me tell you when I like to use each. Multiband compression, when I'm hearing like a problem that's that sounds, it's over a bigger area. So say a vocal is very muddy. There's not one tiny frequency you're going to uh, compress like you would with a dynamic EQ. 
to where it's going to get rid of that mud. No, I want to clamp down on that whole area. So say, for example, this area. That's where it soloed up. That's the, that's the area. So I'm going to clamp down on that whole area. If anything goes above the threshold in that area, it's knocking it down. To my ears, that's more effective. It's more effective. It's less transparent. Yeah, it sounds a little more processed. It sounds more like you're really compressing the vocals, and but it's clean. It's like an obvious cleanliness where dynamic EQ kind of just gets in there and retains the rawness of the vocal a lot of times. Now, yes, you can use a really wide Q on, on a dynamic EQ and do a similar result for sure. But it's also different because you don't, it's not split into bands like, like it is here. So, which can be, can be a bad thing sometimes. So when you, when you split these into bands, these crossovers can cause like resonances, slight distortion, noise, phase shifting. So that is a, a con to multiband compression, but you just got to listen out for that stuff. Before you even compress, so, so for example, let me explain this more. Before you even bring down these thresholds, these sliders, so before you compress anything with a multiband compressor, you are changing the sound because you are, you have these, these crossovers and the gain range, stuff like that. Like it's, it's changing it right off the bat. So let's see, if we can give an example. I don't know how obvious it'll be. It's subtle, but you can hear it. With no compression, we change the sound. That's without. Yeah. It actually changed it for the better, in my opinion. So, multiband compression, right when you put it on there, it is, it is changing things. Uh, dynamic EQ, no, it's not. Before you, before you uh, set this range, so let's give an example here. So if you don't cut, if you don't cut here on the gain, if this range is at zero, let me turn these off. There's nothing happening here on that band, too. Wow, vocal sounds a lot different without these surgical moves here. Yeah, so yeah, so very transparent with the dynamic EQ. For sure. I will give it that. I, I like both. I, I know it seems that I'm more on the side of multiband compression, but I, I use both. But I will say that multiband compression is kind of like a power drill. Dynamic EQ is kind of like a screwdriver. It's just it, it gets to the point quicker. You know, uh multiband compression gets me in the ballpark of where I want to be so much faster than a dynamic EQ. But yeah, you have your drawbacks with it because obviously like uh, multiband compression is, is more of a processed sound, which doesn't bother me too much, but if you're somebody that really likes to 
make vocals very transparent and very uh just sound like you barely used plugins which I, mean, I don't know who really goes for that but if you want that a dynamic eq is like your best friend yeah but i prefer the power drill i, I like to just get get to the point get the job done get it get it going quick and and that's it but as i said i use both but if i I guess what I'm trying to say is if I just use dynamic EQs only, it would take me a while to get the vocal to where I want it. But if I use a multiband compressor and a dynamic EQ, so multiband just for the overall broad spectrum of things, getting things close, and then using following up with a dynamic EQ to just kind of pinpoint problems that are still there, I can get it done quick and it sounds great every time. So for those of you that don't know why we use either one of these tools, it's because frequencies are ever changing, especially with live instruments, real instruments, say like a bass guitar or a guitar, especially vocals. Vocals are a live, you know, instrument, anything that has a big range range of notes anything that has a big range of notes is going to frequencies are going to pop out at all different places I, I teach this so much and i probably sound repetitive but i promise you without grasping this concept you're not going to um progress with mixing this is the hurdle you have to you have to overcome so with multiband compression and dynamic EQ, we are able to only adjust a problem when it happens musically. So throughout a song, maybe it's just that one section that the vocal gets kind of harsh, and we don't have to just cut that frequency like in a regular EQ. If you cut that frequency, you're not only affecting the area that's harsh, but now you're affecting the rest of the song that wasn't harsh. I'm not saying EQ is bad. I just don't get too hung up on it. I mean, if you look at my chain right now, all I did for EQ was a roll off. A tiny boost of high end. And that's it. The rest of it was done with multiband compression, compression, dynamic EQ, fresh air. So you, this is kind of like an EQ. It's a harmonic excitement. So definitely that helps a lot. But yeah, it. Very rarely will you will you open up one of my EQs and see like ten different cuts in different areas and stuff. I mean, you can go that approach. That's that's okay if you want to, but I found that it's very natural to just EQ less and multiband compress and dynamic EQ more. Which, like I said, dynamic EQ is EQ. So it's not that I'm not EQing. I'm just not using a static EQ. Static EQ is an EQ that's just an EQ, can't compress anything, cut or boost, that's it. When you make a cut, it's there the whole track, the whole time. When you make a boost, it's boosted the whole track. So, so once again, the big difference, the title of this video, the big difference is with dynamic EQ, you are solving a problem in a small area. Say it's just a, a weird little honky frequency mid-range, like hollow, something something nasty in the mid-range. You can find it, cut it, and then use compression. You know, actually don't cut too much. Just cut a little bit, or you don't even have to cut at all, but you can compress that, that frequency to where when it does pop out at you, that compressor is grabbing it. And the multiband compression is a big area. 
So if there's a bunch of problems throughout a whole area, instead of doing a million little cuts or a million little narrow compression cues and uh, dynamic EQ, you can just lock that whole area in a range and, and clamp it down. So I hope this video was helpful, guys. This is this is a really, really big debate in the audio community, and, and I hope that this really opens up your eyes in this area. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please subscribe to this channel. Check out the mixing master class in the in the description. Also, free I have a free mini course now. If you guys haven't signed up for the, the mailing list, go do that. It is a actual a clip from the vocal mixing master class that you can kind of get a sample, a sample bite size of the master class before you know making the purchase. So you can go do that. All I need your email. That's it. No money. Free. I just need your email so I can so I can send you emails. That's it. So uh, if that's cool with you, please sign up. I will give you the free mini course. You'll get three ebooks and always get notified with new videos or products that are coming out. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hit the like button if you like this video, and I will see you next week.